Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Siguain. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, you see we have a brand new setup. We've settled into um, our new home in Los Angeles, so very excited to be here. It's sunny outside, which I've missed the sun from being in Squamish for, for over eight months. So it's a little life update for you guys. So today we're going to talk about weight loss versus fat loss. And as I wrote in the title of this podcast, basically being lean and tone versus being skinny fat. So that's the difference of focusing on fat loss versus weight loss. And I'm sure you can associate which one goes with which. When you focus on fat loss, you end up being lean and tone. If you focus on just weight loss, you can end up being skinny fat, right? Like I always say in all the other podcasts, you end up being a lighter, fluffier version of yourself. So here's, before we go into the difference between the two of them, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain the fundamentals of how your body functions when it comes to dropping fat or dropping weight. All right. So I'm sure as you know, when we talk about weight, it's just anything you drop off your body, you're gonna lose weight, right? So if you lose muscle, you also lose weight on the scale. If you lose fat, you also lose weight on the scale. If you lose glycogen storage in your body, you also lose weight on the scale. But is it actual fat? Is it actually the variable that we want to change and remove from our body to allow us to look better and feel better? No, right? A lot of times it's the additional fat that we have our body that we want to remove. So here's how it functions, right? Weight loss, you can do, uh, you don't need a lot of knowledge to be able to do that. You can easily drop weight. Fat loss is a little bit more tricky because we're literally tricking your body into losing fat because it is not naturally what it wants to do. So going back to the basics, you've heard this a thousand times before, but I got some different tweaks on there for you. So make sure you listen fully. So your body is an adaptation machine and a survival machine, right? That's, what you, that's why you've been able to survive for so long. That's why humans have been able to be around for so long. So fundamentally, your body does not care that you want to be lean and tone. All your body wants is survive for as long as possible, right? That's what it's internally wired for. That's why we naturally crave foods that tend to be denser in calories, right? That's why junk food has um, kind of made its way into our life. And that's why it's such an issue because your body goes, okay, I need energy to survive as long as possible. Where can I get the most amount of energy from a piece of celery or from eating a cookie, right? Cookie has more energy in it. It's not the best energy. It's not going to make you feel the best, but your body just wants energy ultimately. So when we talk about doing a weight loss, we're going to attack weight loss first because that's what most people do. And that's why most people don't have great results and can't keep the weight off after. So when you ask anyone, how do you do to lose weight, right? You exercise and you go to calorie deficit, right? Those are the two things that people say all the time. So let's just say that you're a woman um, and that you're eating 2000 calories per day, because that tends to be most women's theoretical maintenance for the most part. So I just, you go to 2000, you get 2000 calories. And most people want to go fast when it comes to their fat loss, right? No one's patient. They want results right away. And so if you listen to um, what the online people are saying, well, you remove 500 calories per day. If you want to lose one pound per week, you remove, you know, double that if you want to lose two pounds per week. All right. I don't know why that is the logic, because if you're trying to lose weight fast and you go to three pounds per week, you, you remove 1,500. If you want to lose four pounds per week, you remove 2,000 calories. Well, technically, you're eating zero amounts of food if that's the case, right? So logically, it doesn't even make sense from the start. But anyways, so let's just see you remove 1,000 calories from your food intake. So in this scenario, you're literally cutting your food in half. If you're a man, you're going from 3,000 to 2,000 calories to lose two pounds uh, a week, you're cutting a third of your food intake. So number one, you're going to be starving, you're going to have cravings, because what's going to happen to your body, it's going to think like, oh, shit, Maxim just went is in the middle of the desert, and he doesn't have access to a lot of food. It's like Maxim's walking all day long, he's burning a lot of energy. And there's not enough food coming in to sustain the energy output that we have going on right now. So because it's such a drastic difference from what your maintenance should be, your body just goes into survival mode. It goes, okay, what can I cut off or diminish from my body 
to survive for as long as possible. So let's just say you were at maintenance, your body knows that with your your normal output and the amount of food you're consuming, you'll be able to live for a long time. You'll never run out of energy, right? But it's kind of the same thing if you have like gas in your car and you're driving faster and you're not replenishing the gas tank, eventually it's going to get lower and the car is going to die. That's what your body's trying to prevent you from doing. So you're in the desert, you're walking a lot to try to find food and you don't have access to a lot of food. So what is your body going to do? It's going to start slowing down your metabolism drastically because it needs to adjust to the fact that you're spending a lot of energy, not getting a lot of energy in. So it's going to do that by maybe you move less with your arms. Maybe you have less gestures. Some people blink less. I know it sounds stupid, but the other part is your body is going to remove things from your body that are non-essential to survival. One of these things is muscle right? A big one of those things is muscle, right? Fat can be used as energy. Muscle is not a great source of energy, right? Muscle is very demanding for your body. Like it, re it requires a lot of calories to be able to sustain muscle mass, right? That's why bodybuilders eat so much food to, to be able to even maintain their muscle mass. So muscle, not a great source of energy that your body likes to use. And it's very demanding calorie. It's very demanding calorie wise. Fat storage is on the other hand, it's it can be used as a source of energy, right? So it doesn't want to let go of all that in one go, right? Because it needs to kind of like space it out to make sure you can live for as long as possible. So if you're going to fast calorie deficit, your body will ditch your muscle. You can be really skinny and live for a long time, right? You, you can be a twig and live for a very long time. You don't need a lot of muscle mass to survive an extended period of time. So your body's going to start letting go of muscle mass and of fat a little bit, right? Because it's trying to use the energy to kind of sustain this current state that you're in. And so what ends up happening is you lose your muscle mass and you lose some body fat as well, right? You start losing some body fat. So on the scale, you're dropping weight, right? You see, yes, I lost two pounds this week. I lost four pounds this week. I lost five pounds. I lost 10 pounds this week. You're very excited. But then little do you know that when you get to your goal of losing 20, 30 or 40 pounds, you feel that you look like shit, <laughs> right? You look at your body's like, I just look skinnier and I look fluffier. What's happening with my body composition? I thought I would be lean and toned when I lost those 20, 30 or 40 pounds, right? You just end up a mushy vegan at that point, right? So that's because your body's wired for survival. So when you go into a rapid calorie deficit, your body, there's just an alert that goes inside your body like, oh shit, let's try to maintain our survival for as long as possible. Get rid of things that are not essential. You start to lose muscle mass. You start to lose weight as well. You start to lose fat as well. But again, body composition just goes down because when we talk about shifting in body composition, there's two variables, right? There's the muscle variable and there's the fat variable. You want the muscle one to increase and the fat one to decrease. That's what allows you to look lean and tone. But if you decrease the muscle and the fat variable, then you just look the same, but lighter, right? And ultimately fluffier because you have less muscle mass because there's less, there's less definition in the muscle. So that's, if you do a rapid calorie deficit, okay? which most people do because they're impatient and that's what's being taught online. So there's another solution. That's what we do with our members, right? We go to slower road. So if you do a slower calorie deficit, and I'm going to give you an example before I go into it. So when people think about wanting to lose 30 pounds, they think about having to drastically cut their nutrition, right? Remove a thousand calories, do a ton of cardio, do a ton of exercise. Well, we had one of our members, um, Nick, who lost, uh, sorry, uh, Nick did as well, but Will, who lost 30 pounds on a 300 calorie deficit. But we didn't start him off with a 300 calorie deficit. Deficit. Sorry, I have a time speaking this morning, right? We started him off on like a 50 calorie deficit, right? And then we went to a hundred and we went slowly. So you have to realize one thing about your body because it's an adaptation machine, whatever shift you give it, it will try to adjust to it as fast as possible, right? It needs to get back to a neutral state. So if you cut a thousand calories, it'll try to adapt, adapt as fast to it as possible for thousand calories and it will for 50 calories. But the thing is, because it's speeding up the process to adjust to that calorie deficit, you're not losing as much weight with a thousand calorie deficit than if I was to create a 50 or 100 calorie deficit every few weeks or a few months, right? When you go slower, you get to maximize every deficit that you create. And so by maximizing every deficit that you create, then you get to lose more weight on a smaller calorie deficit, right? But it's not appealing to people because the results are not as fast. Everyone's in a hurry to try to see the freaking number on the scale. Listen, the number on the scale is irrelevant. If I just say that I'm six foot four and I weigh 204 pounds, right? If I just say that I weigh 204 pounds, to some people that's severely overweight, to some people that's severely underweight, the number means nothing, right? It's simply about how you look 
and feel when you look in the mirror, how you feel on a day-to-day basis. Do you feel strong? Do you feel weak? Do you feel confident? It's all about how you feel. The number on the weight is just one piece of metric that we use to see how you're progressing. Because if you drop five pounds in a week, that's way too fast. It's not the fact that you're going to be a certain number on the scale that we care about. It's that you lost a lot of weight in one shot. Like that's too fast. That means you're losing muscle with that. You're not supposed to lose weight that fast. In order to preserve lean muscle mass, it has to be slower fat loss. But again, it's not sexy. It's not appealing for most people. But that's what we do with our members. So if you see all the amazing transformation in our program and you're like, wow, they look great. That's what they did. We did no rapid fat loss for anyone because we care about their health and their body composition. So to go back to my original point, if you start with a 50, 50 calorie deficit, you'll be able to maximize that calorie deficit because then what happens is you're living your day to day, right? You're working out, you have your energy output, you're still eating a good amount of food, but there's just like a slight deficit and your body just goes like, oh, there's a little bit of a deficit. Let's just adjust. Let's just shed a little bit of fat to get rid of it, right? It won't shed muscle because you have enough energy to sustain it and you're exercising, which helps you to, to preserve and build lean muscle mass. There's like, well, let's just shed a bit of fat, right? There's a bit of a deficit. It's nothing too crazy. It's not like the alert is going on inside your body. Like, oh shit, we're going to die if we continue at this pace. It's just like, ah, just a little deficit. Let's just adjust a little bit. Let's just throw a little bit of fat out. And and okay, good. We're good. Now we lost like, our body stabilized, right? We don't need to like, we lost the weight. We adjusted a 50 calorie deficit. Like we're good. But then let's create another small deficit, right? And because they're smaller calorie deficits, they don't trigger this like red alert going inside your body of like survival, hold on to everything, get rid of anything that's unnecessary. It's basically the equivalent of like your boat sinking, right? You're trying to remove the heavy items first, right? You're not going to throw away the pieces of paper that you have on your boat. You're going to throw the, the freaking the pieces of metal that you have on the boat, all the heavy equipment that you have because you're trying to make the boat not sink as fast. Same thing with your body, right? It just feels that it's sinking and it's trying to throw the heavy stuff out. Muscle is the heaviest thing that you can have. So uh, bones are heavier, but you know, your body's not going to throw out the bones out of your body. That would be um, quite an issue <laughs> if your body did that. So again, by going to that sort of calorie deficit, you're basically tricking your body into just losing fat instead of losing muscle. But most people don't do it because it's not appealing. That's why it's important to have coaches that can mentally keep you on track and hold you accountable. So that's the difference between a weight loss any fat loss. Now, I made a podcast about this a while back. For those of you that are yo-yo dieters, right, that have a history of yo-yo dieting, I mentioned in that podcast that if you're, most people say that when you're older, it's harder to lose the weight. It's not because you're older, it's because you have a bigger history of yo-yo dieting. So think of it this way, because your body's an adaptation machine, it'll adjust to whatever calorie deficit you give to it or any energy output that you give to it. A perfect example of this is if I grab someone that's never ran before and I get them to do a 10 kilometer run, um, they're going to burn so much calories because their body's like, what the heck is happening? What is this new thing that we're doing? And it's very inefficient at it, right? So you're burning through calories like a Hummer, right? You're just super inefficient with, with your fuel. But if I grab a marathon runner that's been training for years, that is very efficient at running, and I get him to do a run, he'll burn very little calorie versus the person that's their first time running because their body has adjusted over time to become efficient at this movement because if it didn't, it if you continue to burn like a Hummer as you're training for a marathon, um, you're going to die at one point, right? Because you're burning too much energy for what's coming in. So your body adjusts to you running into that form of exercise and you become efficient at it. That's why you can run faster for longer with a lower heart rate and you burn less calories when you're doing that. Triathletes burn less calories in a training session than if I grab a newbie and I put him on the same training plan. This person is gonna burn a ton of calories. That's why most people, when they do endurance sports and they're trying to lose weight, I'm like, man, it's kind of like, it's hard because first of all, you're trying to feel for performance but also you're trying to lose weight, but your body's very efficient at this specific exercise. So we have to do something else that your body's very inefficient at. So it would actually burn more calories. So it's, it's, it's the shift in exercise creates inefficiency, which helps you burn more calorie, which is really valuable when you're trying to shift your body composition. So don't try to do more of the same thing because you're becoming more efficient at it. That's why for our members, we changed our workout every single uh, month. We call that a phase. It's about four weeks because your body adjusts to it, becomes efficient at it. And because we're trying to shift your body composition, we just need to, you to be in a constant state of inefficiency that your body's like, oh, this is more challenging. There's more reps, there's more sets, there's shorter rests, there's different exercises. That's what's important to change that. So going back to the adaptation piece, if you've done yo-yo dieting in your life, 
Um, basically when you talk about EO dieting, people will do something that's usually very strict to try to lose the weight, either a huge calorie deficit or it'll cut out certain types of food, but in a very strict manner, they're going to lose a bunch of weight, but because the method that they used to lose the weight was not sustainable, then at one point they're going to be like, either I reach my goal or I can't do this anymore. This is so unsustainable. And then they just revert back to their old habits because they didn't address the core underlying issue of like, you have bad habits and a bad mindset when it comes to your body and health. And we didn't address these things. You basically just push those things aside, shut off your brain and did something really intense for a short period of time, which again, is not sustainable because you're not addressing the underlying issues. And then people put the weight back on, right? And then they feel like shit for a while because again, this is my story too in the past. That's what I used to do as well. Then you feel like shit. Maybe it takes you three months, six months, maybe a year before you gather up the courage again. Okay, like, oh, I'm going to go through this really intense process again to try to lose the weight. And so, and then you go through it again, right? You're very intense because potentially that's the only way that you were told how to lose fat, right? It's not your fault. There is no people like me talking about this thing before, right? Everyone's like, most most coaches and especially in the fitness industry it's been around for a long time they're so focused on the freaking before and after photo right what i care about is the after after photo right like before and after is great but like can you stay that after right so we want to make sure that we continue the habits and the training after and at the end of the day once you're outside of the program and we gave you the tools it's like you need to continue these things because if you don't there's no magic that happens, right? You're not going to magically stay fit if you stop working out. Fitness goes away really fast. There was a week where I got sick and I didn't work out for a week and I my body just atrophied. <laughs> it just, it doesn't take long to lose it. You have to obviously continue to do it. So going back to my point, which I remember where, where, where I was at with it. Um, yeah, so yo-yo dieting, you put the weight back on, you feel like shit. It takes you six months or a year to like, okay, I'm gonna go through this very intense process all over again. Then you drop the weight again. And it's not sustainable. And at one point you stop, you're like, oh yeah, I reached my goal, party time. And then put the weight back on six months or a year after, right? The stats are about 95% of people put the weight back on six months or a year after in North America. And then you do that over the years. Well, guess what? Because when you create a fast calorie deficit, your body's going to adapt to that as fast as possible. That's why at a certain point you start to plateau. And that's why if you do a big calorie deficit, once your body plateaus, you need to make another change to continue to lose more. Well, if you cut a thousand calories, like where do you want to go from there, right? If you're a woman eating 2000 calories, you cut a thousand calories, so it was two pounds a week. What if after about a month and a half to two months, you just stop losing weight? Well, you're going to have to go lower than a thousand calories. Can you imagine eating a nine, 800 calories? That's extremely unhealthy. Not even just only from an energy coming in standpoint, but you also have to think of like the health component. Your body needs building blocks. It needs vitamins, minerals, amino acids, nutrients coming in. Less food you eat, less building blocks are coming in, more foods you eat, more building blocks are coming in, right? So food is not just energy. It's also the building blocks for your body to, to heal, to repair, and to keep you healthy and to allow you to thrive. So years of your dieting, your body adjusts to the calorie deficit that you do, but also your body will also adapt to the process of yo-yo dieting. So you start to become efficient at yo-yo dieting. So what that means is the next time you eat less food, you try to go another crazy fat loss, your body knows because you've been through this many times. So it just goes red alert, hold on to everything you got, right? Because it's the next time that it's the last time, last time Jessica did this, whatever name you want to use, whatever your name is, right? Like Jessica did this, like it was crazy. We starved for a long time. We didn't have enough energy. We're fearful for our survival. So now let's just hold on to all the fat that we have. So the more often you go through this process, the more your body builds resistance to it. And then so obviously as you're older and you've gone through more cycles of it, then your body has become more resistant to it versus if you're, you know, in your early twenties and everyone always says like, when I was in my early twenties, it was so easy to lose weight. Well, yeah, cause your body didn't know what you were doing to it. But now that you're like 40, 50, 60, your body's like, damn, like we have a history of this. We know how to deal with this, right? You're again, your body just thinks that you just fell in a desert and you don't have access to food. It doesn't know that you're in your comfortable home. You have access to thousands of calories around you and you're just trying to lose weight to be healthy. Your body doesn't see it that way. It's just like, shit, we're in a desert again. Like, right. We need this person to stop being in a desert, not have access to food. So when we talk about doing a fat loss and reverse dieting, we're literally tricking your body into releasing the fat and letting go of the fat through exercise and proper nutrition, right? And the nutrition that you eat makes a difference. The quality of the food makes a difference in how you feel, but the quantity also makes a huge difference because that's how we trick your bodies with the quantity part. So that's the difference between fat loss and weight loss, right? Weight loss, you're just 
mindlessly cutting a lot of your calories, your body's going to adjust to it. You have to go lower. If you want to continue to lose more, you're going to lose muscle mass. You're going to look skinny fat. Uh, but it's, hey, it feels better because you lose weight faster on the scale and you're super excited about it, but it's not the right type of weight, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't matter because you'll look like shit at the end. You won't feel awesome. And then on the flip side, it is a slower process, but when you're done at the end of it, your body looks so much better. It's so much more sustainable, right? Because you have taken the, the thing is the thing with fat loss also, and people don't think about this is they're like, I just want to lose weight fast. And then they remove all their calories. And they don't address the fundamentals of like, you have an unhealthy relationship with food. You have an unhealthy relationship with fitness. You have an unhealthy relationship with yourself. You have bad habits. We need to address those. Guess what? That takes time for you to address those. And that's why we focus on that with our members in the program, because I was a part of fat loss programs in the year, in the past years. And it was just, you just who, who cares about your bad habits? Just shut off your brain and do the work. And then I did the work and then I put frigging 50 pounds in a month after I was done my first show. So that's the reason we focus so much on mindset with our members, because everyone can shut off their brain, push off their, their, their life obligations aside for an extended period of time to do this specific thing. But that's not what I want my members to do because that's not how life works. Life doesn't work I'm like, okay, let me just shut off everything. Never eat out at the restaurant. Never have a date night with my partner or never go on a date if you're looking for a partner. Or never go to a family gathering. Like that's not how life works. You're not trying to compete for the Olympics or freaking Mr. Olympia bodybuilding show. You're trying to be healthier and look awesome and feel great and be able to live your life to your fullest potential. Well, in order to do that, we need to address the underlying things that are causing you to have this excess weight. We need to address the environment that you're living in that's causing you to have this excess weight for you to not have the body that you want. We need to address the mindset, the limiting beliefs, the self-sabotage that is happening in order for us to allow you to not be in this position ever again, right? I structured the program to be the last program you ever need to do because I want to address all these fundamentals with you because that's what makes the difference, right? So that is the difference between weight loss and fat loss, ultimately. I know I went a little bit um, deeper uh, into the topic and, and different branches, but that's ultimately how we help our members transform, right? That is like the the explanation behind everything that we do. And that's the explanation behind why 95% of people put the weight back on. After done any form of weight loss transformation, we focus on fat loss, right? The majority of members post-program keep the weight off, right? And here's the condition, as long as they continue to work out and respect the nutrition. When I mean respect the nutrition, I don't say obsessively track their calories, obsessively be in low calories. We help our members reverse diet so they speed up their metabolism. And on average, our members can add a thousand plus calories to their food intake to maintain their new body. But after you have to continue to exercise, because like I said, I've been working out for 18 years. And if I stop exercising for a week, I start to atrophy. I start to become less fit right? I've been at it for 18 years. You'd think it'd be built into my freaking body, but it's not, right? That's just, just how it works. You want to be healthy. You have to continue to move. You have to continue to make healthy decisions with your body. Our job is to give you the right tool and address the underlying issues that are causing you to have these bad habits and to put yourself in these bad environments so that you can put yourself in a position to be successful and they can to continue these good habits after, right? And for the people that are listening, that are current members, past members, or potentially new members that want to work with us, what we did is we added an additional two months of free coaching post-program. Because after I actually recorded this podcast with Darcy, that's maybe a, a few episodes ago, um, he mentioned that he like put on some weight, but he stopped doing the things that allowed him to be fit. And he realized, damn, I just there's no magic that's going to happen if I don't continue to do the work. It's like, I just need to put my big boy pants on, my adult pants on, and like, continue the habit. And then he did. And again, he got a six pack after and he's even fitter. Now I, I, we just did a workshop with him. Damn Darcy looks like me. He's as jacked as me. Like he's looking great because he was like, I need to continue this after ultimately he knows that if he stops working out, no magic happens. If he stops eating healthy food, like no magic happens, right? You have to continue these habits after, and we'll show you how to do it in a sustainable way. That's why Darcy was able to get such great results, but he brought up something interesting, which was, um, after the program, some people felt a little bit confused as to like, how to move out on their own and to be self-accountable with their training and nutrition. So what we added is an additional free two months of coaching when members are done reverse dieting, right? So they go through a fat loss phase, we go through reverse dieting and we give them two months of free coaching. And here's what that looks like. When our members are done, we email them all the workouts that they, uh, they've they ever done with us. We email, they obviously have all their meal plans and nutrition and recipes, but the struggle is the self-accountability part. So now members will stay on our custom Fit Vegan app 
They're going to have weekly check-ins with their coach and the ability to message a coach every day if they have any questions as they're starting to find their footing, right? So I just use the analogy of Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. So as you're in the program, it's wax on, wax off. It's just training, right? You're learning how to be able to defend yourself into the real world. When you're out of the program, it's your first real fight. Um, and if you're on your own and you're trying to figure it out to be self-accountable, defend yourself, like you know how to block, you know how to strike, but you've never been punched in the face yet. You even have to like block things that were uncontrollable, like the variables of life. So now what we did is we won't have the fight for you because that's a crutch. But instead of leaving you on your first fight on your own, you're going to have a coach in your corner. That's going to be like, hey, this this shot is coming. Respond this way, right? So you're going to be able to text your coach with questions, um, have a weekly check-in. So you still have that accountability. And basically over the course of those two months, we slowly remove the training wheel so you can kind of go off on your own. And that was thanks to the podcast episode that I did with Darcy, right? I'm always open to improving how we coach people and how we make our program because I truly want to make this last program that people ever have to do. And I think we're doing a freaking pretty good job at it at this point. Uh, but yeah, very excited for this new phase. We already have some members that are in a post two months program and absolutely loving it because they're like, okay, like I'm taking care of my nutrition. My metabolism is sped up. I'm eating a lot of food. I'm exercising three, four times a week. Sorry. Exercising three, four times a week. Um, but like now there's this event that's coming up and I'm not too sure how to handle it. Bam. They can just message their coach. Right. So that extra accountability makes the world of a difference. So if you're someone that's been struggling with yo-yo dieting for years, um, that's been again, gaining the weight, uh, sorry, losing the weight, gaining it back, losing weight, and just have a yearly, like you just continue to do it over and over again. Your body's building more resistance to it. So if you don't want your body to build more resistance to it, and you want to make one last change to make this last program, the last transformation that you need to do, then there's a link in the show notes where you can book a free breakthrough coaching call with me directly right? I'm going to be taking these calls for the next maybe two, three weeks. Um, after that, I'm going to have a team member taking them because there's too many of them. Uh, that's the issue. But we have these calls for a few reasons. First of all, we want to see if we can actually help you in your journey, right? Second of all, we want to make sure that you're coachable. Third, it's a filtration process because I only want to bring in um, I just call them good apples in a program. We have such an amazing community of people that are health oriented, that are focused, that are coachable, that are willing to learn and are getting amazing results. I don't need a bad apple to come in that group, right? I'm not after before and afters. I'm after the after after photo, right? I want people that want to make this the last transformation of their life. And we have this call to filter people through that. So if that's you and you're connecting with that, there's a link down below. We can book a free call with me. Uh, if there's no availabilities that work for you, if there's plainly no availabilities because we have a lot of people trying to come into the program right now, um, you can message me on Instagram and be like, hey, I'm trying to book a call, but I can't find a time that works for me. Um, here's when I'm free. And I'll try to move things around to make this work so we can have a conversation, right? Because I'm very dedicated to getting you to your end goal. Because as you know, our mission is to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and disease-proof their body on plants by 2033 and a million by 2050. And because of our recent partnership with the nonprofit Sea to Sky Thrivers, which helps to um, educate and support people that are going through chronic disease and help to reverse chronic disease, we're now supporting families who can't afford to get the education to get the help to reverse their chronic disease through whole food plant-based eating. We're now um, funding these families to be able to get access to those resources because I've shared this multiple times before, but we donate money to cancer patients every single month, right? Um, I give a percentage of our profit from all the companies I have to families that are battling cancer because of my past story, uh, history with my ex-partner. But one thing I realize is if I'm donating $1,000 to a family and they believe that eating steak is healthy, then they will use $1,000 to eat steak. Right. At the end of the day, they spend the money however they want, but I just, it's not supporting them in the way that I want, that I feel that would be the most helpful to them with my experience. And I believe that plant based eating is the way to go, which is why Fit Vegan exists. So through this, I'm able to pay for people to go through this, this course, this certification to understand how to reverse their chronic disease for themselves and family members that are sick. Something I wish I had when I was a caregiver. So very excited about this partnership. You can find more about that at maximcy.com will be in the giving back tab on the website. So you can learn a little bit more about that. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of you for listening to this podcast episode. I'm very excited what's to come for the future. Um, it's going to be beautiful. We're going to reach out 10,000 people way before 2033. So very excited about um, being able to transform all these lives and give back and just honestly honor my ex-partner um, 
and yeah, help everyone. So hope you guys have a beautiful day. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast episode. Um, one last thing, you notice I'm only posting once a week on this podcast. That is because I started a second podcast called um, The Maxim Sigoin Show, where I bring on guests from that are outside the plant-based space that have different areas of specialty. So it could be could be mindset, relationship, finance, business, all these other things. Um, so I'm only posting once a week on each of them because I only have <laughs> so much time in a week. So uh, if you want to go listen to that, just Maxim Sigoin Show, you'll be able to find it on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, every single platform. So massive thank you for listening and uh, stay tuned for your next episode next week. Bye.